what will you do with the situations where you need God to make a way for you where there is no way? In the next few minutes, I want to share with you some biblical principles that you are going to need if you want God to make ways for you where there is no way. Based on my experience, I believe that most of you will need these principles frequently. Why some will need it occasionally? My friend, what will you do with the situations where you need God to make a way for you where there is no way? What will you do? Where you get something going on in your life? Where you say, how do I get this fixed? How do I get this problem resolved? What do I do now? I know you are going to need God to make a way for you where there is no way. Now turn your Bible to the book of Exodus chapter 14. I want you to look at some biblical principles that God uses to make a way where there is no way. I believe you know this passage of the scripture. The children of Israel have just been released by Pharaoh and Pharaoh has now changed his mind in letting them go in taking his fight after them. The children of Israel have just taken their goods and their belongings from the Egyptians. God has just visited the Egyptians with all the plagues on them. And finally, Pharaoh had enough and the children of Israel are now going to their promised land. They have escaped out of Egypt, but Pharaoh has just changed his mind. And Pharaoh is about to go after them with the mightiest military force on planet Earth. And bear in mind, the dynamic here is unbelievable because the children of Israel has no army, no training, no armament. They have no weapon to fight. And Pharaoh, on the other hand, has the mightiest warfare machine known to man. You see, the situation was that God's people have no means of defending themselves. Pharaoh has every means of trained warriors, which is the most powerful known to man at the time. He is now going after them. You will find the story of what happened in that chase in chapter 14 of the book of Exodus. Now from this passage of the scripture, I want to give you some biblical principles that God uses to make a way where there is no way. Now write the first principle down. You are going to find it in the first verse. The first verse of chapter 14 tells us that God put his people exactly where he wanted them to be. God put the Israelites exactly where he wanted them to be. Did you hear that? God put his people in the place where he wanted them to be. You see, we sometimes forget this. God is not going to let you be where he never wants you to be. That is why God wants you to be grateful. God wants you to give thanks for where you are right now because you are there by His divine providence where He wants you to be. Read these verses with me in Exodus chapter 14, verses 1 and 2. The word of the Lord says, Now the Lord spoke to Moses, saying, Speak to the children of Israel that they turn and come before Pihahirot, between Migdol and the sea, opposite Basiphon, you shall come before it by the sea. Now, wait a minute. Let me explain what you just read. The Bible made us to know that on one side, there was a huge mountain that is uncrossable. On the other side is the Red Sea. And at this point, the Red Sea is at a minimum of 800 miles across an 800 deep feet and behind them is Pharaoh with his armies, is Pharaoh with his warriors. God, this can't be where you want us to be. We have been surrounded by the enemies. We have been encamped in the wilderness. We are just going through the gorge. We are facing the mountain. We are facing the Red Sea. We don't even know what to do. They were surrounded by impenetrable mountains. They were also facing the Red Sea that they cannot cross. And the mightiest military power ever known to man 
is also coming behind them to fight them, to chase them into the wilderness. They were like, God, this is not a good place. Of all places you would like us to go, God, this would not be one of them. But you know what? It is exactly where God wanted them to be. The same way in that situation in your life, where you are listening to me today, God knows exactly where you are and He could have changed any of it because He is God. But what God wants you to know today is to recognize that you are where God puts you and He wants you to start thanking Him for where He puts you. My friend, how good are you at thanking God for your problems? How good are you at thanking God for your trials? How good are you at thanking God for that impossible situations in your life? The Bible says in everything, give thanks. That is why Paul, while writing the church from the prison, says rejoice. And again I say rejoice. Apostle Paul told the church, I want you to thank God for what is happening to me. That is why he said, let your request be made known to God with thanksgiving. You see, if you are not going to listen to any other thing from me today, I beg you to listen to this. If you are better at thanking God for your blessings alone, for your miracles, for your signs and wonders, than you are for your trials, you are not a real Christian. Do you thank God as much for your trials and your problems and for your impossible situations as much as you thank and praise Him for your blessings? Remember when you get a salary increase, you say thank you Jesus. When you have any major breakthrough, you say thank you Jesus. I just got a better car. I just got a new house. Oh, thank you Jesus. But when you are in trouble, when things are not going the way you want, when you have bad news, you cannot say thank you Jesus. And suddenly, thank you Jesus is gone. You cannot thank him in your situation, in your trial. Thank you Jesus didn't come because we have become a people who only want to thank him for the blessing alone. And then we begin to accuse him. We begin to say something bad. What are you doing? Why me? Why do you allow this to happen to me? The reason is because we think that it is only our blessings that are worth thanking Him for. I want you to know today that most Christians are destroyed by their blessings, but they are made by their trials. They are made by their challenges. You see, most of the great spiritual growth is not done in time of blessing. Most of the great spiritual growth is done in time of trial, in time of challenges, in time when you need God to make a way for you. You see, God is looking for someone who is going to say, God put me right here and God put me here for a reason and I'm going to praise Him. I'm going to give Him thanks for my life. God is looking for somebody to say thank you. Somebody with heartfelt praise. God is looking for somebody who will say, I want to thank you for my trials. More than I want to thank you for my blessings. God, I want to thank you for my blessings. But God, I want to thank you more for my trials. I want to thank you more for my challenges. God is looking for somebody that will praise him in every situation. God is looking for somebody that will say, I want to thank you more for my disappointment because they are not disappointment to you. Moses and the children of Israel didn't make any sense of where God was putting them. They said, God, it seems like we are like setting ourselves up to get caught. They were like, God, we got this wilderness. We can run inside, but you were like, run into this place stay here. That was a journey of 1,000 miles. Why do you want us to run up there? God, why? Why do you want us to face the Red Sea? The question is, why will God lead them to a trap? Why will God lead them to a trap? The answer is, 
God understood it was only a trap to man. But God was about to do something that we will be preaching from generation to generation. God was about to do what we be preach on for the generation to come. I want you to know today, where there is no way, one thing that God wants you to realize is that it starts by your understanding that God put you where you are today, by His great providence. It starts with you saying, God put me here, and I'm here for a reason. I'm going to give Him praise. I'm going to thank Him. In this situation that I find myself, I know God is here with me. I am not alone. He is leading me. He is guiding me. I am here for a purpose. I'm here for a reason. From today, I want you to know that nothing finds us by accident. But God brings things into our life because God was going to use that to change everything. God is looking for somebody who is willing to praise Him as much for your trials as you are for your blessings. There has never been an accident in your life, my friend. It's been God's providence. God put you where you are by His divine providence. He put His people where He wanted them to be. I want you to know today that God put you exactly where He wanted you to be. I hope what I'm preaching today will be part of your life, being willing to praise God for your trials, for that storm, for that situation that you are going through. From my pastoral experience, I realized that a small percentage of Bible-believing Christians don't understand this. They don't know that most of the time, God put us where He wanted us to be. God put His people where He wanted them, and God commanded us to praise Him in every situation. Today, we wonder why we lack God's power. We wonder why our prayer life have no meaningful results. We wonder why the peace that God promised is not ours. I want you to know today, God commanded us to give thanks. In every situation we find ourselves, God commanded us to praise Him. From today, I want you to begin to thank God for your trials. You see, to not thank God for our trials is a wicked sin. We are so comfortable thanking God for our blessings. But when we get any trial going on, we never thank Him. God commanded us to give Him praise. He commanded us to praise Him. Remember that you are exactly where God wants you to be. And He wants you to thank Him and praise Him for that. Write the second principle down. And I love this so much. In your trials, God wants you to be more concerned for His glory. God wants you to be more concerned for His honor than you are for your relief of deliverance, than you are for your relief of freedom. God wants you to be more concerned for His glory. He wants you to be more concerned for His honor, than you are for your relief of freedom, than you are for your relief of liberty. God wants you to be more concerned for His glory and for His honor, for making Him look good in the time of your trial than you have for your release or for your freedom. He wants you to make Him look good in that time of your trial. When was the last time you said, God, I want to make you look good in my trial. I want to make you look good in the situation confronting me. Are you more concerned for God to get more glory in your life? Are you more concerned for God to be honored in your life than you are for your blessings, for your relief, and for your deliverance? Now, I want you to read with me verses 3 and 4 of the book of Exodus chapter 14. The word of the Lord says, For Pharaoh we say of the children of Israel, they are bewildered by the land, the wilderness has closed them in. That is exactly correct. Pharaoh said, The wilderness has closed them in. And in verse 4, the word of the Lord says, Then I will add in Pharaoh's heart, so that he will pursue them, and I will gain honor over Pharaoh and over all his army, 
that the Egyptians may know that I am the Lord. And they did so. I want you to know today that God is interested in Him getting glory and honor out of your trial, out of what is unimaginable to you. God is interested in Him getting glory and honor out of your trials. In your trials, are you more interested in that God looks good? Are you more interested in that God gets glory and honor than you are to bring honor to Him over your deliverance, over your relief? I know that that is not easy to do. That will never come natural. But I believe God can help you. He will give you the grace when you ask Him to take glory and to take honor over your trial. I believe that comes when you ask God to let that be in your life. God is looking for believers who will say, I want you to look good in my trials. I want you to take glory. I want you to take honor than the release, than the freedom that I'm looking for. God wants you to be that kind of Christian. More than I want deliverance, more than I want freedom, more than I want breakthrough, more than I want a way out. I want honor for your name and for your glory. God is looking for such believer who will make him to look good in his trial. Who will make him to look good in a trial. Now, the third principle that I would like to talk about, if you want God to make a way for you, where there is no way, you must learn to pray fervently. Learn to pray fervently. Jump to first 10 of the book of Exodus chapter 14. And when Pharaoh drew near, the children of Israel lifted their eyes, and behold, the Egyptian marched after them. So they were very afraid, and the children of Israel cried out to the Lord. And the children of Israel cried out to the Lord. Remember that the Bible made us to know that the effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man are faced much. I think we sometimes forget that. God never said that mere prayer of a righteous man are faced much. He said effectual prayer, the fervent prayer of a righteous man are faced much. Here is the question. When was the last time you prayed fervently? Do you know what it means to pray for things? It means you really pour yourself into it. You really pour your heart into prayer. When was the last time that you were in the presence of God? In your alone with God, that you pour your heart out before the Lord, that you pour yourself into the prayer, that you pray fervently. When was the last time? I've been to different churches prayer meetings in my lifetime and most of the praying that I hear, I didn't sense a lot of fervency. I didn't sense a lot of fervency anymore today. Look at what happens at some churches where God is doing great things. They pray with fervency. I want you to know that God commands fervency in prayer. That is why I want you to begin to pour yourself into that kind of relationship with God. You can pray fervently asking God to make a way for you where there is no way. You see, the most powerful thing on planet Earth is not atomic bomb. It is not a nation. The most powerful thing on planet Earth is prayer. God commands us to pray fervently. John Rice used to say that every failure in life is a prayer failure. I hope in hearing this message today, you will begin to pour your heart before the Lord through your fervent prayer. My friend, if you want God to do something about your situation, if you want God to make a way for you where there is no way, number one, you must begin to give Him thanks and praise for putting you where you are today. You need to realize that He put you where He wants you to be. And number two, more than you want deliverance, you need to let God know that you will make Him look good in your trial. You need to let God know that you will give Him glory and you will give Him honor through your trial. And number three, you must be praying fervently. The fourth principle that I would like to talk about 
if you want God to make a way for you, is this. You need to learn how to wait upon the Lord. Learn to wait upon the Lord. Learning to wait upon the Lord is a command when you read through the scripture. Now, I want you to go to Exodus chapter 14 that we have been reading. Read with me verses 13 to 14. The word of the Lord says, And Moses said to the people, Do not be afraid. Stand still and see the salvation of the Lord, which will accomplish for you today. For the Egyptians whom you see today, you shall see again no more forever. The Lord will fight for you, and you shall hold your peace. Look at what the Bible says. And Moses said to the people, Do not be afraid. Stand still. Wait a minute. Stand still. We are in a mess. And he says, Stand still. I want you to believe with me that one thing we don't want to do at that moment is to stand still. But God says, Stand still. You see, all through the scripture, God keeps telling his children to wait upon him. We have this notion that waiting upon the Lord means to do nothing. But I'm here to tell you today, it doesn't mean to do nothing. That is the time you need to believe in Him the more. That is the time you need to believe that even though you can't see what God is doing, but you need to believe that God is doing something that you can't see. God wants you to believe. God wants you to be building your confidence that he is doing something in your life even though you can't see it yet this is a hard one for me as well even though i don't know what god is doing right now but i'm waiting i know that he's doing something i know that he's doing what i don't understand and i know that he's building my faith this is where god does the great faith development work it is where god built our faith remember faith is the substance of things we hoped for. You see, at that moment, when you are saying, I'm trusting in God, I am putting my hope in Him, that is when your faith is being developed. No faith, no hope. Waiting in the Lord doesn't just mean sitting down. It is that moment when you need to put your confidence in the Lord. It is that moment when your faith is being developed. What I want you to know is that when God says stand still, God is saying to you that I am doing something even when you stand still. God is saying to you that when you stand still, I am doing something. That is why the command is be still and know that I am doing something because I am building your faith. My friend, God is saying to you right now that I want you to praise me and I want you to thank me in that place where I put you. God is saying to you today, I want you to be more concerned for my honor. I want you to be more concerned for my glory. God is saying to you today, I want you to pray more fervently. And He's saying to you today, I want you to be willing to stand and build your feet. I want you to be willing to stand still and build your feet. Now, finally, number five. The fifth principle that I want to share with you today is that you need to take the next step of faith. You need to take the next step of faith. In Exodus chapter 14 verse 15, the word of the Lord says, And the Lord said to Moses, Why do you cry to me? Tell the children of Israel to go forward. And the Lord said to Moses, Why do you cry to me? Tell the children of Israel to go forward. My friend, it is time to take the next step of it. If you want God to make a way where there is no way. You see, they have waited. And God said, now I want you to take the next step of it. If you want God to do the impossible, if you want God to make a way where there is no way, God is waiting for you. God is waiting for me to just take the next step of it. God is saying today, Take the next step of faith. Whatever that may be, God is talking to you right now. Take the next step of faith. My friend, take the next step of faith. It will make a way where there is no way. Even if you don't know that your next step of faith is going to solve anything, God is saying today, take the next step of faith. 
God didn't say, take the next step that will solve everything. God says, take the next step of it. My friend, right now, take the next step of it. God will make a way. God is looking for someone right now who he can show himself strong through this message that you are hearing right now. That is why my Bible says that the Spirit of God is going to and fro through the whole head, looking for somebody he can show himself through mighty power. God wants that fellow to be you. He wants that fellow to be me. And he wants that fellow to be every one of us. God is looking for someone today who will say, God, I'm going to praise and I'm going to thank you for my trial. God is looking for someone today who will say, God, more than I want deliverance, more than I want a way out, more than I want freedom, I want to be concerned for your glory and for your honor. Your honor is going to mean more than me getting what I want. Your glory is going to be my concern than me getting what I'm looking for. And I'm going to pray fervently and I'm going to pour myself into your presence. God is looking for someone today who will say, God, I'm going to wait and I'm going to have my faith built. God is looking for someone today who will say, God, I'm going to take the next step of faith. God is looking for that fellow today. God is about to do what you can't imagine, but He wants you to take the next step of faith. He wants you to take the next step of faith today. From today, I don't want you to be worried about that Pharaoh in your life. Can you imagine what is coming for Pharaoh? The power of God is going to destroy Pharaoh and his armies because the children of God will find way. Because you will find way, the power of God is going to destroy Pharaoh in your life. You see, if there's any time for you to trust God to make a way for you where there is no way, it is this hour, it is this time. Because God is going to destroy that Pharaoh in your life. God is going to destroy his armies and you will find a way. He will make a way for you. Pharaoh will no longer be remembered in your life anymore. All you have to do right now is to take the step of faith. God says you have to take that step of faith. Go forward. God is commanding you today to go forward. Go forward in His strength. Go forward in His might. He will make a way for you where there seems to be no way. All you need to do from today is to praise Him and give Him thanks for your trial. All you need to do today is that more than you want deliverance, more than you want freedom, you must be concerned that God will be honored, that God will take glory in your trial. All you need to do from today is to pray fervently. All you need to do today is to be willing to stand still while your faith is being developed. All you need to do is to build your faith in God, have confidence in God. All you need to do today is that you must take the next step of it. You must go forward. You must go forward. He will make a way where there is no way. The Pharaoh and his host will be destroyed. The power of the enemies will be obliterated by the power of the Lord. You have to believe God. You have to build your faith as you are waiting upon the Lord. Put your confidence in Him that God is at work in your life. As you are waiting upon the Lord, it is the time that your faith must be developed. It is the time you need to put your trust in God. It is the time you need to rely on His power. Today, I want you to make a very powerful decision that will transform and change the trajectory of your life. I want you to be that Christian that God will use to make a way for others. As God is making a way for you, I want you to decide that even in your life, God will be honored, God will be glorified. You will be that Christian, you will be that believer that God will make a way through his life, through our life for other people. Decide today. I would like to pray with you right now. Let's talk to this almighty God who is able to make a way 
where there is no way. Bow your head with me in prayer right now. Dear God, thank you for those who have listened to your word today. Father, I don't know how it will be, but I know this. We have a God who loves to make a way where there is no way. God, only you can change every bit of impossible situations. It is only impossible for man, for your word says, nothing is impossible for you. Father, make a way for us today. We want to be the people who will spread your glory and who will tell the world that we have a God who can make a way where there is no way. Help us, O Lord, to be the people who will spread your glory and your honor, who will show the world that you can still make a way where there seems to be no way. Father, we want that privilege of making you look good in the face of our trial. We don't have to see how you do it, but we just have to know that you are God who can make a way where there is no way. Father, we bow. Thank you, Lord Jesus. We know without you, there wouldn't be a way, but with you, we know you delight in making a way where there is no way. God, we thank you for our blessings and for our trials. We give you praise. God, we want you to help us to take the next step of faith today. Hear our cry, O oh Lord. God, it doesn't matter what it is. We know you are the God who makes way where there is no way. We praise your holy name today in the name of our Savior. Amen. I believe you've been blessed today. I want you to leave a comment below. Tell us about the impact of this message in your life. And I want you to share this message with your friends, with your family and your loved ones. Thank you for doing that. Until I come your way next time, I'm Nidin Binru. Bye for now.